Dr. Luke Evans. Thank you, Amanda, for coming. Nice to see you. Um, this actually standards is quite an interesting point to come in on. Um, I'd like to talk about GP access, your report, our, our plan for improving access. Um, it uses a stat in it that says in August 15% of GPs recorded less than 20% face-to-face consultations. Talking about standards, what is the correct percentage the NHS is looking for? Yeah, so thank you for that. I mean, I think, for, again, if, I'm really, uh, I'm really conscious that the vast, vast majority of colleagues in general practice have worked you know, and continue to work you know, absolutely tirelessly. They do a really um, essential... In fact, I think they're the building block of the NHS and they continue to be. And in putting together the package that we announced um, last week, it was really trying to recognise, actually, the enormous service that GPs do, how important they are to the public, and the uh, necessity of recognising that they have been both, you know, absolutely at the heart of the very successful vaccination programme, continue to support urgent access and all of the proactive care, and therefore we actually need to put some we need to put some money behind supporting general practice. Uh, so 250 million, it's a lot of money, um, but you know, it feels absolutely necessary to make sure that we have got. Uh, the ability now uh, to support access across the board. Part of that also, of course, is then additional investment in things like technology to help with things like answering well, I'll, the phones. I'll pick up some of, some of these. I, I, well, I know you want to come back, but I was going to say, I, I think we have really tried to steer away from saying that there is a kind of a right number for face-to-face versus other types of access, uh, because what's clear is uh, many people absolutely do prefer face-to-face access. GPs are required to provide it. It's part of the contract. Um, But for some populations, it's going to be a particular number, and for others it will be different, depending on the nature of their... Well, that closes on the 28th Thursday, where you've asked all GPs to say in what their reflections are on what that should be. I guess my concern is the way that I see it. On on the one hand, you've got the public who want to get back to -to face-to-face. On the other hand, you've got GPs who are saying we're working in a different way um, and seeing more patients. I put it to you as the leader of the NHS that isn't that the debate we should be having to say people what should they expect? Because on the one hand, the clinician would argue they're providing on the basis of clinical need. On the other side, the patient has the right to determine the right service for them. How do you solve that conundrum? So what we've talked about in the document is respecting patient preference. Because what I hear is many, many people say, actually, it's hugely convenient being able to phone a GP or do a digital uh, digital consultation. It saves me lots of time unnecessarily travelling to a GP practice. But it's absolutely it's absolutely right that that isn't going to work for everybody and it's not going to work for every circumstance. And therefore, the sort of respecting patient preference is the bit that we have, uh, we have said is, is really important here. So that's why for those practices, and you've talked about them, where the percentage of face-to-face care is very low, that does feel out of step with what we're hearing across the rest of the country, company, you, and we need to give them particular support. You want to, those practices that they're working hard are doing, want to know what feels about right. Is it 60, 70, 10? It's going to vary across the country. I'd like to pick up on your yeah. £250 million, pounds because it gives examples of how people could spend it. It talks about more sessions for existing staff, locum pools, um, extra admin staff for extended hours. The staff in the, the situation would say, we're already under the pressure. We, we can't do any more than that even though there is money there. What's the response to that? Yeah, I mean, we've also tried, I think, as part of the package to look at where we can take some of the burdens away from from primary care uh, colleagues, particularly administrative burdens. Um, And uh, certainly it's also where I think... uh, the ability to use the wider multidisciplinary team is also important because primary care is a team sport. It's not just about general practitioners, although they are hugely important, Um, and thinking, therefore, about how uh, we can give local systems now the flexibility to work out what's going to work for them, I think is the the right way of doing it rather than, if you like, us trying to determine nationally what's going to work best in different parts of the country. There's some really good stuff in there about taking away some of the admin roles, improving things like the cloud-based telephone yeah. service, it, fantastic things that will make a difference. And when every clinician who sat here in this, doing this backlog, I've asked them how much time do they spend on admin. Each one says, on average, about 10%. So again, I put it to you as the CEO of the NHS, that actually one of the areas you could focus on most 
is dealing with that 10% because that would automatically increase the productivity. Um, what do you think the impact of that would be? Of being able to reduce administrative yes, the, the, burden. Yeah, the Chasing a scan, getting together, yeah, you know, yeah. finding a letter, um, yeah. the interface yeah. between primary care yeah. and secondary care. If you opened up access, for example, of hospitals being able to put blood tests in GPs, share scans across immediately, that takes a huge administrative burden off GPs and indeed the hospital yeah. and gives continuity of care for the patient who isn't chasing a letter. Yeah, uh, so I mean, completely agree with you. And I think that is one of the reasons why continued investment in our digital infrastructure is so important. So the ability to share records, the ability to do exactly what you've just described um, is, uh, is, is I mean, it, it's absolutely clear that those parts of the country where they have got integrated IT systems and where they can work really effectively as systems to do what's right for the patient, but really using all of the assets and all of the uh, all of the um, uh, uh, the workforce that they've got to their. Uh, in their system, but in a way that is streamlined and avoids multiple letters, multiple calls, and all of the uh, all of the overhead you've just described is it's absolutely where we want to be.